I guess for starters, it's it's sort of a, an early question here, but but please uh, just give us an idea of why human trafficking became such a special uh, mm -hmm. cause for you. Mm -hmm. Well, like so many, I mean, I've traveled the world, and uh, I saw human trafficking initially years ago and didn't know what it was. I would see little girls on the street. I would see little boys on the street. I would see little girls in our own mall and not really understand what it was. And when I realized uh, what it was, it, I, it was something that not only astounded me, but it astounded me at how prolific it is right here in, the, in our United States. It's something that, you, that all of us can see every day on the streets, in the malls, in the schools, and not recognize. Is that one of the biggest challenges for the general public to recognize how how prevalent it is? Right, that's part of what the council does and what the McCain Institute does is we educate educators, people, neighborhoods, communities, clergy, whatever it is, whatever, whoever wants to hear us uh, about what it is and what to look for and what to recognize when you see it and what to do when you see it, uh, more importantly. How do you get that conversation started, especially if people aren't aware it's a problem? Well, in the early days, uh, it was very difficult to get it started because people not only didn't believe that it was going on here, but really thought that it was just something that occurred, you know, over in, in some country, some other third world country. And so it was hard to get the conversation started, and it's just a slow process. Now, it, it, human trafficking is part of the daily conversation. We have a seat at the table at major events around the world that talk about these issues. And we obviously have a, a task force and a council, a human trafficking council here, that works very hard on, on trying to stop it and trying to train people to understand what to do with it when they see it. So how do you build on the awareness that you are beginning to build? How do you build on it further, and what do you do with it once you've achieved that? Well, there's always work to be done, and uh, we still have a great deal to do in the healthcare community. Uh, and we have a huge, the McCain Institute has a huge project going in the justice sector with labor trafficking. Uh, we have, um, uh, you know, we're working with our law enforcement. It's a collaborative effort, and that's what we're, what the Institute and, of course, the council are good at. We're collaborating. We're bringing people in from all across the state and the country to work together on this issue and be on the same page and what we're, with what we're doing, more importantly. And you also mentioned an important distinction. I think folks, once they become aware of the idea of human mm -hmm. trafficking, they think mm -hmm. it's, it's all sexually based, and it sounds like there's a variety of it. Right. Human trafficking can be sex trafficking. It can be labor trafficking. It can be organ trafficking. Uh, which is not something that is, is within the daily conversation. Trafficking is trafficking. Uh, labor is actually larger than sex trafficking. Labor trafficking is a huge issue around the world, and certainly right here in the United States. And organ trafficking? Organ trafficking. Um, it's, it's not a new beginning. It's been around for a very long time. But uh, the same people that are trafficking humans, that are trafficking guns, that are trafficking drugs, are trafficking organs as well. Uh, it's a... It's a it's a network that's worldwide that is, um, is something that we are just beginning to, f to try to figure out how we can combat that. And a lot of it has to, to go, we, a lot of it has to do with going straight for the money uh, that's involved. So. so people are being moved and then killed at a location where their organs are used? Correct. Yeah, being told they're going for a job or whatever it may be, and then they're used, they, they use them for their organs. A lot of those are children, too, that have, that happens to and of course, that's child soldiers is another one that I failed to mention. That's a large part of human trafficking, especially in Africa. And all of these things are happening <clears throat> in the U.S. and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Happening in the U.S. Uh, it's, it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere around the world. You were talking about going after the money. Mm -hmm. how, does, how does that work? Where does that effort stand? Well, for instance, um, there's, a, there's been websites that deal in sex trafficking specifically where cards like American Express and MasterCard and Visa said, nope, can't use our cards on any of these things. Uh, so it, we began with that, the, the credit system, because that's a, the largest network in all of this. And now we're working with World Bank, we're working with, with uh, various banking systems, finance systems around the world to, to, to track, help track the money, not only because it's a safety issue as well, but track the money and then try to figure out just exactly where it's coming from. If you, if you buy a human being, let's say right here, let's say you want a little girl for sex here, which is heinous anyway, um, that money is probably going not just to the local trafficker, but it's being filtered right back in to a huge network, network that, that really leads to the worst of the worst kind of people in this world. 
So it's, it's you know, it, when I first got my hands around this and, and really saw what, what we were up against, I realized this is not only something we have to do locally, but worldwide. Is a lot of this particularly elusive because it depends on the shadowy parts of the internet mm -hmm. and so on? Mm -hmm. Dark web's a huge problem with this. As you know, uh, this, the Senate passed, a, along with the House of Representatives, passed um, a, a bill that has, has enabled uh, Backpage to be able to sell people or, or, or you know, do any of those kinds of things online. Uh, and it's an internet issue. It's, it's a safety issue that we were able to use against them and get them stopped. Uh, but, it, but what it's done also, uh, we, that, that's the good part of this, but it's driven a lot of it underground. Uh, but that's something we're, we're, we're working with, with many organizations around the country to try to, to try to get into. There's an organization called Thorn that's very good, led by Ashton Kutcher, um, that's very good on the, this dark web issue. And so we work very closely with them. Now, it's, it's Trafficking Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, is there a particular significance to the month of January for this? And, and also, what do you do with this extra publicity? Well, it's, I, I don't know that there's a specific uh, reason that we chose January. I honestly don't know the answer to that. But I do know uh, that, that being able to light the Capitol Blue or be able to put billboards up or be able to, to put things in the airports or wherever, wherever we may be is always helpful. The more awareness, the more ability that we're going to have to, to collectively get together and stop this crime. Um, it's a heinous epidemic worldwide. Now, what should just individuals do with an enhanced awareness of all? Well, number one, be alert with your own children and with uh, with the with their use of the internet, you know, the computers, uh, your community. Um, I, I tell parents a lot of times. Look, I know it's easy to say, "Well, I'll drop I'll drop my daughter and her little girlfriends off at the mall for an hour. It'll be okay. It won't be okay." Uh, you, the, the, our, the predators hang out in places like that. So I think I tell people be vigilant, be very careful with your children. Make sure you know who is with them. Make sure you know they're being watched if you're not with them. Um, these traffickers are very elusive, and they're very good at luring ch people in for whatever their purpose may be. Now, what sort of what what would you hope you would do with this awareness at local government level, national mm -hmm. level, international level? Mm -hmm. Well, locally, just what we're doing, community action is, is the biggest part of this. Our health care systems, our police, our, our, our first responders, we're all part of the same network here to work together on this recognizing and then what to, where, to, where to help this child or adult. Where can we place them? Where can we get them to that's safe? Removing the word prostitution as it applies to a child. Prostitution gives the, the idea that somehow there's, it's okay. The child gave their permission to do this. A child cannot be a prostitute. A child cannot give permission. So the state of Arizona took the word prostitution out of the legislation. That's a big part of this in how we treat our victims because they are, they are victims. Uh, lo nationally, we're, uh, we, Rob, Senator Rob Portman, my husband was a big part of this, have all been very instrumental in strengthening the laws as it, as it, as it applies to children and others with regards to trafficking. Worldwide accountability, making sure that countries not only not only are they accountable for what's going going on within their borders, but that they are effectively trying to do something to combat it. That's the biggest problem right now. Please elaborate on that. Well, for instance, um, there's been some discussion with within our our, our government about um, aid money, where it's going, how it's tracked. Do we know that it's going where it's supposed to be going, or is it going into the pockets of those who are actually trafficking victims, or is the aid money going to, to organizations that are actually have people working on whatever crafts or whatever it may be that are enslaved doing it? Uh, it's more accountability on our own part, and also saying to these countries, if you are not going to apply good practices, best practices, uh, the understanding that this is not only wrong, but, but prosecution, then, then maybe we won't give you as much money. Maybe we won't help you in the way that we should until you get your own act together and your own house in order. Are there some cultural hurdles to break on that? Mm -hmm, large cultural hurdles. Uh, you know, you have uh, countries in Africa where it's believed that uh, if, a, if a male uh, has uh, sexual intercourse with a child, he won't get AIDS. I mean, that's just crazy. So uh, those, we are combating things like that. 
where is the social the social element to this is a huge issue, and that's something that we work the local NGOs on and the local local folks on. Now you talked a little bit about just awareness on the level of parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any anything else you want to say on that? Any any mm -hmm. ad, further advice? Well, I I I, I would. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a helicopter parent. I mean, I was I was a really good helicopter parent, um, but also just just being aware of your surroundings. You know, are, the, there's a lot of people going in and out of my, my neighbor's house. A lot of children. It looks like it's it's being aware of your surroundings and then doing something about it. It's not a, it's not a bad thing to call the police if you suspect something. It, there's nothing wrong with that because you may save a child's life in all of that. So I tell people. Uh, you know, I know we all, uh, I don't want to call, I don't want to get involved, I don't want to be a part of this. Uh, get involved. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we use the, the TSA adage, if you see something, say something. It's important. Do you think people sometimes are, are too quick to go like, no, they never do something like that, when in fact they might, they maybe are. they should consider that? It's the ones you least suspect that would do it. I saw something yesterday, I, I love In-N-Out Burger, I saw something <laughs> yesterday, I pulled in and walked in. And I saw a young man sitting on the right-hand side with his phone, and he was clean-cut and, you know, just a pair of shorts, nice-looking guy. And there were four little girls across the way at, a, at another table. I walked in, and I, I kept my eye on this. Something hit me wrong on this. And he, he, then he got up, walked to his car, sat in his car. I told the manager, in and out happens to be a huge anti-trafficking organization. They are way into this issue. I told the manager and I said, look what's going on, maybe you ought to take a look. And they did. They took a look, they went out, they called the police. I don't know what, what the outcome was, but it, it's just stuff like that. You have to be aware. And, it's, and this sounds like, yes, you talked about, oh, the, the helicopter parent, yeah. the dreaded helicopter yeah. parent, <laughs> but, but um, you got to strike a balance. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. Um, it, it's also making sure that your school is involved in this issue. Uh, what we, when we began all this, and I would approach uh, schools or approach the school superintendent then uh, and say, look, we, we, this has to be an educate. We have to put it into the schools. Um, and a lot of times they would say to me, well, no, we don't do sex ed. This isn't sex ed. This is about survival of your child. We're not, ta we're not talking about sex ed in any way, shape, or form. We're talking about safety. Uh, it's about it's about making sure that these kids are aware and they know, and 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 tell their parents if there's a problem or tell the school if there's a problem. So you've got to go over, get over the the reluctance to pose the difficult issue. Right, because it, it, people view this as a as a, ugh, it's got an ick factor to it, and it shouldn't have. It shouldn't have. I think that's going to do it. There's, there's so much here to cover. I know. We've undoubtedly missed something. Is there anything you want to add on any of this? Well, I just uh, appreciate Governor Ducey and all this. He's been, he, as you know, he was an original member of the task force that we founded four, four or five years ago, and uh, he he is he's not only maintained the, the council that we have, but he's increased it. So I appreciate what he's doing. I appreciate the state. Uh, the, the workers here, the, the first responders, everyone, because we have a great collaborative effort. We are saving children's lives. And we began with just a few. Now the, the collaboration is huge. And, uh, you know, if you're going to try to traffic anybody in this state, you're going to get caught. 